I was quite surprised the other day when I was going through the internet doing some research and discovered that unhappy women is a worldwide phenomenon. Worldwide, across all boundaries, all countries, and time, no boundaries. Well, how did all of this start? Way back in the 1970s, when the women's movement began. Now, I was a young mom back in the 1970s. All of my cohorts were stay-at-home moms. And all of a sudden, on the scene comes Betty Friedan, and I go to hear her speak, and Gloria Steinem, Steinem with her Ms. Magazine, basically saying, it's time to emancipate women. It's time to get out there in the workplace because we deserve it. Now, I'm the child of a mom who had to go to work because my dad died very young. And I'm talking in the 50s and in the 60s. So, yeah, unfortunately, first of all, it's hard for a woman to find a real job. And to get paid when a man gets paid, forget it. But what really shocked me is even today, women still, even in high, impressive positions, still often aren't getting paid when a man's getting paid. And I'll tell you what, if you're a white woman, you're making more than a woman with color. So... What were the results of this wonderful, magnificent, yay, freedom and equality for women? It actually was the start of this whole series leading to unhappy women. And the number of unhappy women continues to increase world wide and quite frankly i was shocked because i always thought of betty Friedan and gloria steinem as some people use the word sheroes i think that's a little bit goofy but as heroic leading away of something very important but the problem is when women are working and they're working full time and they're probably getting paid less than men doing the same work. They then come home and they have a full time job at home because the fact is that a woman in a full time job comes home and oh, it was probably in the 70s. There was a stupid commercial for a perfume product, I'm pretty sure is what it was. And the music said, you can bring home the bacon and still remember your, uh, and fry it up in a pan and still please your man. I, the words were something like that. What a picture they're painting. And that's what women were living into in the 70s. And here we are in the 2020s and women are still responsible for the care in their home. Women in a full-time job with men in a full-time job, they're coming home and they're spending at least 11 hours a week taking care of the home. They're doing the cooking, they're doing the shopping, they're doing the laundry, they're doing the house cleaning. 61% of the work in a marriage where there are two people there, a man and a woman, the woman's doing 61% of the household work and taking care of the kids. And if you're in my generation, there's a really, really good chance that you're also in addition to taking care of a full-time job, all those responsibilities, 
taking care of your home, taking care of your kids, really good chance you're caring for an aging parent. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, that's if you're married in a relationship. But what about all the single moms out there who are working full time? And they come home and they're responsible for 100% of everything. You know, juggling all those tasks can imagine what it does to your stress levels to be physically and emotionally exhausted, to feel overwhelmed. Well, of course their happiness levels, their life satisfaction levels are doing a nosedive. And as I said before, it's worth repeating, those numbers are increasing worldwide every year and you can look back historically it started with the women's movement yeah that was a really good idea but it isn't playing out it hasn't been playing out in reality wouldn't it be lovely if women went to work and their husbands went to work and they came home and they shared all the responsibilities now i'm aware in my daughter and son's generation that more and more couples actually do share the responsibilities all of them and that's a really fantastic thing to know about however is that addressing the fact that women are still underpaid for doing the same work that a man is doing our emotional makeup is different from a man's. Women tend to worry more. So there's all this pressure. There's all this stress on them. And they're taking things in. And what does worry do? It's tearing you up inside. So I... Where do you go with this? Okay. Many years ago, I raised my kids because that's what my cohorts did. You were a stay-at-home mom. And then when my kids were gone, I went to work and realized, gee, I'm always studying psychology and energy and putting it all together. And someone said, why don't you go study it and get a degree? Because you're always giving advice to people anyway. As a matter of fact, people were coming to me starting when I was just nine years old, seeking advice. So, of course, I was thrown into that position. And with my kids grown and gone, I started working outside the home. I worked in a homeless shelter where I actually got to counsel people. And then... I moved into crisis care where well, I guess you could say I got to counsel people in mainstream psychology. What you can do and say is extremely limited. But anyway, so I was out in the work field and I was risking my life every day out there. And I was making $13 an hour. Risking my life, in fact, in crisis care. One day a very, 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 did I say that enough time? Dangerous client cornered and attacked me and left me with a brain injury. Took me more than three years to heal. There were 16 people on my medical team. Guess what? All 16 of them were men. Mainstream medicine men. And what they all said was, it's all in your head. Isn't that interesting? If a doctor can't figure out what's wrong because they don't have the know-how, because they don't have the tools, they will tell a woman, this is very common, go see a psychiatrist, go see a psychologist. There's nothing wrong with you. Their ignorance 
they're not going to claim that they don't know. They're going to put the blame back on you. I remember after having so many doctors tell me, the nurse in charge of my case took me to another doctor who knew what test to do. And it was immediately obvious what part of my brain was the worst hurt, causing all the problems I was having. So the very arrogant doctor who said there was nothing wrong with you, he just didn't have the skill to know what to look for. <clears throat> so where am I going with all of this talking about women who are unhappy? After I healed from the brain injury and I started, actually the way I healed was to create looking for the gifts and I was doing that for myself and then I realized wow they really are gifts and I'm going to feel happy and grateful that I can look for because I'll always find those gifts and right then I started something I call the happy share movement so what I do is every morning I actually list 10 things for which I feel happy and grateful that morning. And I remember for many years, I was happy and grateful that my eyes worked, that I could walk around without falling over, that I eventually took three years, eventually I could follow a conversation again. I was happy and grateful for all these things that people take for granted. So I wasn't stuck in the place of being somebody unhappy because I took charge of my life. And I'll tell you more about the Happy Share movement in a bit. So I started seeing clients because the way I healed was energy work. Many different modalities helped me to heal different aspects of what I had lost. And it was really cool because I was really adept at learning things, had no memory, had to work with my manuals open, but I was usually the first one in the class to grasp the concepts and to have success with my clients. So where am I going? I had a client, I, I love, love, love doing teaching live classes because I love to demonstrate by having volunteers come up. I have very experiential classes and I have people come up so that everybody in the class gets to be part of responding to the invisible energy. You know, you think all the space around us is empty, but it's not. It's full of all kinds of things, and today scientists have devices for measuring and seeing, and you can see all these patterns. The space isn't empty. And those of us who can see and feel the energy, can you feel that energy if you just run your hands and consciously want to be aware? I did energy work. I felt the energy. I do Qigong. I feel the energy. I see the energy while I'm practicing. So in one of my classes, in every class, I'd have somebody come up and for a very quick, immediate uh, response, I'd ask them to think of something that left them very frustrated or annoyed. Man, every person thought of something instantly. Why does that happen? Because in our world today, we are not looking for what we want in life. We're looking for what we don't want, what we want to avoid in life. So that happens instantly. And then I ask people, think of something that left you feeling happy. And 100% of people don't come up with something right away. So I say, do you have a child? And every single one of them, almost every single one of them who had a child, immediately a smile would come to his or her face. 
Well, one day, Cheryl was in my class, and when I asked her those same questions, think of something that lets you feel happy. She stood there for the longest time, and she tried, and she tried, and you know the word tried means there's not going to be success. She couldn't, no matter what, think of one single incident across her life. This was somebody in her 50s. All across her life, she had no recollection of ever feeling happy. So I asked her, do you have a child? She said, yes, it's an adult child. She couldn't think of a happy memory there, even raising him. So after class, she asked if she could come work with me. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Well, when Cheryl came to work with me, because I work energetically, things happen really, really fast, pretty much instantly. And after our first session, Cheryl called me the next day. And she was beaming. She was overjoyed. You know how you can hear a smile in somebody's voice? Well, it was coming out loud and clear through the telephone. She said, I'm happy. I never felt like this before. I'm actually happy. So she came back for her second session. And she and her son, if they ever tried to talk, they wound up in a fight. So they were at the point where they just didn't even try to talk to each other. She lived on the mainland U.S. He lived across the ocean on, in Hawaii somewhere. So they were at the point where they weren't talking to each other. Now, I was working just with Cheryl. And after our second session, she called to say, it's all good with my son. Note that I was working only with Cheryl and the relationship between her and her son cleared up. You do not need both people to be present when there's a relationship issue. One person alone doing the kind of energy work with somebody knows how can clear the issues. Oh, and by the way, if you're thinking of getting a divorce or you've had a divorce, the energy called divorce is still inside you and your ex-spouse. And if you don't clear it out, it's going to stay in your energy, clearly invisible and out of your awareness. But why do you think second marriages have the same divorce rate as first marriages? Because that energy is still sitting inside your energy field, inside your aura. So it's real important to clear out all that stuff and the whole issue of the marriage. And again, only one person needs to do it and it'll clear for you and your husband, your ex-husband, so that you don't have to be afraid to be in the same room. If you have kids in common, you definitely don't want to be uncomfortable if you're going to be in the same room together. Yes? And you want to be happy so you can jump in when you're ready, if you want to, a new relationship without any baggage to be in the way. But there was one more thing going on in Cheryl's world. For three years, someone at work had been harassing her. She filed complaints. She took a legal stance. Nothing change. So just going through, clearing her energy, in the third session, can you guess what happened? Anybody want to guess? She called me the next day and she said, he's still there in the office, but he doesn't bother me anymore. So all the legal action she had tried to take didn't work, but when she cleared for herself the history of stuff going on 
got it all eliminated. And by the way, when you eliminate one thing in your knowledge, hundreds, maybe as many as a thousand circuits that fired together and therefore wired together, they all clear out. So here she was, shall we say, as so many people use the expression, she was one happy camper. Now I had, had another man, so you don't think I were going with women. He had an estranged relationship with his son. And he came to me and actually we were working just by phone. And after a session or two, he let me know that he and his son were pals again. And there they were together, adult son, of course, walking on the beach. And then the next issue he brought into our, I guess I could say, counseling session. He wanted to sell his house. But the thing was, he had a girlfriend living in the house with him. And he didn't know how to get rid of her. He wanted her to leave, and he didn't know what to do. So we just talked, and we got him clear on his situation, and he just knew because he was clear. He knew how to talk with her without hurting her feelings, without creating animosity between them, and she just left the house, and he was able to sell it without any problems. So when you take care of you, then your world works. Well, getting back to the unhappy women, not everybody knows that they can go get the help. And somebody who's already stressed doesn't know how can I take time to take care of myself? I have to take care of my job. I have to take care of my kids. I have to take care of my home. I have to take care of my mom or dad. What are they supposed to do? Well, let me tell you why you must, must, must learn how, even with all those responsibilities, how to take care of yourself. You see, I lost way, way, way too many female friends to female cancers. Here's how they happen. Breast cancer strikes. Women who fail to nurture themselves. What a breast do they nurse? Your baby, they nourish your baby. But too many women who are too stressed and overwhelmed and press for time and juggling all these responsibilities and trying to figure out, so we would try again, how to exist and handle it all, there's no way they're nurturing themselves. Then there's also, there's another issue that a health fanatic like me is going to know because I'm also a healthcare practitioner. As long ago as early 1900s with Dr. Weston Price, who was very famous, in fact, he, there's a whole foundation, I think it's called the Weston Price Foundation, and they educate people on wellness because that's what Dr. Weston Price did in the early 1900s. And one of the things he was explaining to people is the dangers of root canals. Because what happens is infections go up in there when they remove all the inner stuff of the tooth. And that goes up, it creates infections. I had two friends who it took them years to get the infections cleared out. Incredible pain, incredible expense. There are certain teeth that if there's a root canal happening in them, it winds up in breast cancer. If it's a root canal on the left side, it winds up in the left breast. On the right side, it winds up in the right breast. 
And as a matter of fact, if you go to my blog, I'll have the link for you where you can go and check out the study. It was actually a study done with 300 nurses, and every single one of them in that study had a root canal on a certain tooth. So that's something I wanted you to be aware of. And then there's the uterine and ovarian cancer. That's about giving birth. Giving birth to what makes you happy, to your desires, to things that bring fun into your life. Well, when you're a stressed, unhappy woman, you're not thinking about making the time for yourself. But that's because our culture has caused us to become that way. And the other piece of that is, women, there's a reason that we can multitask. There's a reason that we're the ones who are designed to be home, raising the kids, taking care of our aging parents. And chances are, if you're a woman, you're also contributing to the happy and wellness of your friends. Because that's our nature. That's what most of us do. So people, women also, because we have those sensitivities, we also worry a whole lot more than men do. Fat men will usually say, oh, just get over it. <laughs> if you're in a relationship with a man, have they ever said, just get over it, just move on? That's not to say there aren't some women who do that too. But it's more likely a woman's going to worry about something to be sure it's taken care of. Or at least everyone involved and impacted by it is safe and well. So all these things come together, but wait, <laughs> there's one more thing still. When I had that brain tumor, well, you create a tumor in the part of your body that there's a function there that you're not doing. What do I mean? When I created the tumor in my brain at the brain stem, well, the brain stem is critical to your health and well-being. So having a tumor there reflected the fact that I had all this material. I've been writing since I was six years old. I've written more than 80 books, more than a thousand articles. I've done a thousand videos and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs. I teach through songs and I was sharing them and I reached 200,000 people, but that wasn't enough for me to make the change I came here to make. I wasn't given these gifts so that I could just reach a few people. I know I was given these gifts. And gifts include that attack. It includes the brain injury that happened when the tumor was removed because there were very important nerves inside it. And the particular nerves I lost caused me to not have normal body function. And they're all gifts. They're all gifts from the universe. There are no accidents. So what I learned from the brain tumor and where it was, I need to spread my word. I need to get out there in a bigger way because people learn from me. And that's another gift I was given. I was first tutoring people when I was seven and giving advice even to adults when I was nine. When somebody had a problem, they didn't call the adult in the house, they called me when I was a little kid. When I was working in psychotherapy and somebody was going off into some kind of episode, they called me because I could bring peace just by being there. So we have all these gifts. You have them too. Look for them. They're there. Use them. 
And if something keeps showing up in your life that gets you frustrated, that gets you angry, that gets you upset, because it keeps showing up, it's because the universe wants you to know something you're not seeing. You're not getting the message. Hey, that's how I wound up getting hit in the head. The universe kept saying, get out of here. This isn't where you should be working. And I didn't get out of there. The universe puts everything on your path. Every person in your life. Every kind of circumstance. Every event. So you get the gift of seeing, oh, that's something I can choose to have a different view of it. I can live my life differently around that kind of situation happening. So what I want you to know is single moms, women, grandmas. I know so many grandmas who are raising their kids. And unfortunately, it takes a lot out of a grandma who's in her 70s or 80s. And I lost friends who were grandmas because the stress was more than they could handle at their age. Everybody, it's time. It's time to awaken to an intolerable situation. And change only happens when we come together in large enough numbers to speak out. To refuse to settle for the myriad inequalities still running rampant today. What step are you going to take to make a difference? And for you, I want you to go over to the Happy Share Movement. If you're on Facebook, just go to the Happy Share Movement page. And if you're not on Facebook, you can go to the happysharemovement.com, watch the video there. It explains what a happy share is, how you do it, and perhaps more importantly, why you do it. Because you can instantly change your life. You can instantly find a way to reduce the pressures and the stress. It's not magic. I can't make it come in and wave a wand and have your world get simplified. However, when you can change how you're running your head, guess what you can create? A different circumstance to handle the way your world runs. Thank you for joining me here today for Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and mind. Be sure you check the show notes for all the links mentioned. I always follow my heart and the guidance of the universe when I'm here with you. And I trust that you're learning to listen to your inner guidance. If it feels good in your love place, which for me it's around my heart, might be at your solar plexus, if it feels good, it's good for you. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Don't go there. I want to remind you to enjoy every moment of your life. That's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y. Because nothing in life happens outside of you. Everything gets processed within. You don't see out there. You don't hear out there. Taste, touch, or smell out there. The sensations happen within. I look forward to being here with you next time.